Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Priya Zapaha. This is my third part of significant provisions of women in Indian legal system. In first two part, I have already explained some of the major amendment of 2013 and 2018, which has been made under criminal law for women in India. In this particular video, I'm going to explain some of the provisions pertaining to marriage and pregnancy. So let's start. In my opinion, women should believe herself and she should also be taught to believe in protecting herself on her own and not to depend on a man for her protection. She has a power to protect the world and not just herself. Our legal system has provided many rights and laws pertaining to marriage, dowry, domestic violence and pregnancy and they keep on amending time to time. Some of the important provision I'll explain pertaining to these things in my video, which every woman should know. The first one is child marriage. Although the prohibition of child marriage act has been enacted way back in 1929, and there are several amendment has been made thereafter, but still this type of practice is going on. In the Prohibition of Child Marriage Act 2006, which was effective in 2007, it has been clearly stated that if the age of girl is below 18 years and a boy below 21 years, that will come under the category of child marriage. And if any boy is getting with a minor below the age of 18 years, or if their parents, their guardians and the family members or any other person are forcing and being a part of that marriage ceremony, then the punishment will be up to two years of imprisonment or a fine. There is one more provision of child marriage that if any boy or girl is forced into a child marriage as minor, they have an option of voiding, voiding their marriage up to two years after reaching adulthood. And in certain cases, marriages of minor can be null and void before they reach adulthood. These are the provision. And in this condition, all valuables, money and gift must be returned if the marriage is nullified. And the girl must be provided with a place of residence until she marries or become an adult. Similarly, if a child is born from the child marriage, they are considered as legitimate and the court are expected to give parental custody with the children's best interest in mind. The next is Special Marriage Act 1954. As you all know that India is a country full of diverse religion and caste. Therefore, there are family or the personal law. Personal law means we are having Hindu law, Muslim law and Christian law and whatever marriage, if the marriage is performed in these particular religion, they are performed under personal law that is either in Hindu law or Muslim law or Christian law. But if anyone wants to perform marriage inter caste, inter religion and uh, if uh, they want to marry to the foreigner. Then if this type of situation is in India, then they may perform marriage under the Special Marriage Act that 1954. The Act of the Parliament of India enacted to provide a special form of marriage for the people of India and all Indian nationals in foreign countries, irrespective of the religion or faith followed by either party. Marriage solemnized under the act are not governed by personal law. That means they will not considered as a marriage under either the Hindu law or Muslim law or Christian law. The marriage will be under a special marriage act 1954. In a very common term, they are called as court marriages. The next one is dowry. Although in the earlier stage, dowry was not a crime. It was a type of a gift which is given by the parents of bride at the time of marriage out of love and affection to the bride, bridegroom and the family members and parents of the bridegroom. But this particular thing has been desecrated by the time. 
now the dowry has is demanded and that too in a form of a durable goods cash real or movable property and so on and this problem persist not only at the time of a marriage but also after marriage looking after this this problem uh, the dowry prohibition act 1961 was enacted but this problem was persist so that's why in 1980s i remember i was very small but i remember that in 1980s india was flooded with the burning of a bride and a dowry death that's why there was an amendment in indian penal code also pertaining to dowry death these amendment are section 304b which is related to dowry death and second is section 498a which is again related to domestic violence if we look at the dowry prohibition act which says that if anyone demands dowry then their punishment will be minimum of 5 years and a fine more than 15000 rupees or the value of the dowry received whichever is higher this is the punishment of the dowry if it is reported looking forward to section 304b which is related to dowry death if there is a death of any bride within the 7 years of a marriage that can be in a form of a injury or a death or a burn or any other thing if there is a death of a bride within the 7 years of a marriage then under indian penal code the punishment will be 7 years and maximum is life imprisonment so this is a provision related to the dowry and the dowry death section 498a i'll explain in the next slide next is domestic violence as i have already said that in 1980s there was a rampant increase of dowry death in india that's why there was a need to add section 498a in the indian penal code and the object and the purpose of this particular section is to protect women from any domestic violence and these domestic domestic violence could be any sort of cruelty due to the demand of dowry that cruelty could be mental cruelty physical cruelty or emotional cruelty so it claims to protect women against dowry related harassment and cruelty so according to section 498a it states that whoever being the husband or the relative of the husband of a woman subject such woman to cruelty he or they shall be punished with imprisonment of 3 years and shall also be liable to fine and the offence is cognizable non compoundable and non available next is dissolution of marriage if any woman is not happy with his marriage with her married life she may dissolve her marriage under indian divorce act 1869 or under hindu marriage act also the dissolution could be in a form of a divorce or a divorce by the mutual consent or nullity of marriage nullity of marriage i have already explained if there is a child marriage or if a husband is impotent likewise there are family courts in india which are established to file here and dispose of such cases next is termination of pregnancy although before 1972 that is till 1971 in india abortion was illegal later on due to the occurrence of illegal abortion and to reduce it illegal abortion this particular act has been enacted the termination of pregnancy is permitted for a broad range of condition up to 20 weeks of gestation and it can be under these specific reason the details are first when the continuation of pregnancy is a risk to the life of a pregnant woman or could cause grave injury to her physical or mental health then there can be an abortion next when there is a sustainable risk that the child if born would be severely handicapped due to physical or mental abnormality third when pregnancy is caused due to rape that means it is presumed to cause grave injury to the mental health of the women so it can be terminated 
and fourth it can be by accident that means when pregnancy is caused due to the failure of contraceptives used by the married woman on her husband then a lady can terminate her pregnancy the next is right against female feticide although the termination of pregnancy act has been enacted for the benefit of the women looking after the problems which the women can face during the time of the pregnancy but this has been misused in india still there is a demand of a boy rather than a girl and female feticides are aborted so the primary function of enacting the preconception and prenatal diagnostic technique that is prohibition of sex selection act 1994 is to ban the use of sex selection techniques after conception and prevent the misuse of prenatal diagnostic technique for sex selective abortion because usually not even at the in the villages but even in the cities also even the family which are of uh, well of family they are also doing such type of practice which is really very bad and if anyone who contravenes any of the provision of this act or rule made there under shall be punished with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 3 years and with fine which may extend to 10000 rupees and on any subsequent conviction with imprisonment which may extend to 5 years or with fine which may extend to 50000 rupees so this is a very serious type of offense and one should not do this is not only illegal but immoral also please don't do so this is end of part 3 of significant provision for women in our indian legal system hope you like the video and if you like it do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel and if you want the detailed note you may visit to my website that is priyasepaha.com you may also follow me on fb page that is law college you instagram law college you and twitter dr priyasepaha thank you for watching hope you like the video see you soon bye bye